I got broads in Atlanta, just to throw me in the family Credit cards in the scammers, hitting the licks in the band Legacy iPhone 8 Plus review worth the skip The iPhone 8 Plus looks similar to its predecessors, but the glass back makes it special enough it is built to the highest standards, waterproof, and still one of the best looking flagships, bezels or not. We like the no-nonsense design, but the toughest glass didn't live up to the expectations and it's easy to scratch. The iPhone 8 Plus has a glass leading IPS LCD in terms of brightness and color calibration. True tone adjustment. The 401p is behind most of the recent Android flagships, but it's still in the flagship ballpark. Sunlight contrast is superb for an LCD screen. Battery life is above average with an endurance rating of 81 hours. The phone has well balanced scores across all tests. Wireless charging is finally here as is fast charging. Too bad you need a chunky and expensive MacBook USB-C charger to enjoy it. We hope third-party makers will step in and provide more portable and affordable options. The connectivity is improved with Cat.12 LTE support, and for the first time ever, reading standard NFC tags is also supported. The lack of analog audio port is a turn-off. At least there is a free adapter in the package. Performance-wise, the A11-powered iPhone 8 Plus is arguably the most powerful smartphone in the world right now. Its CPU and GPU performance, as well as the overall experience, are unrivaled unless we count the iPhone 8, which is even more powerful due to lower screen resolution. Apple iOS 11 is great, a nice step forward with a refined interface, notification and control centers. It makes a better use of 3D touch, has better Siri, a file manager, dark mode, among others. Apple has an industry-leading software update program, you are guaranteed to get all iOS updates in the next few years as soon as they are out. However, iOS still lacks any customization options such as iThemes or icon packs. The stereo speakers scored an excellent mark for loudness, which is as high as an iPhone has ever achieved, and subjectively, they sound great. The audio quality through the lighting with 3.5mm converter is very good but not quite the best in class. The main camera offers the same great levels of detail, superb processing and class leading dynamic range of its predecessor and is better in low light, lower noise, sharper images and better color and white balance. The telephoto camera has a neat portrait mode which offers one of the best, if not the best, software bokeh effect on any smartphone. It's nice to have a 2x zoom camera in good light, but the smaller sensor and smaller aperture make the telephoto camera unusable in low light. Portrait lightning effects are super cool, but they are still in beta and require further fine tuning. First ever 4K videos at 60 FPS and they turned out great, even though a little softer than the 30 FPS. The regular 4K videos offer great detail, superb processing, and once again class leading dynamic range. They still come with mono audio recording though. 1080p videos provide high enough quality to be considered usable in the age of 4K. Finally, they have codec uses less storage for videos and doesn't hurt the quality, so we recommend it. The front 7MP selfie camera takes nice images, though not the best we've seen.